the worst of the worst that Washington has. These people aren't just sexual offenders. They also have mental abnormalities. Fear, anger, death threats as misinformation spreads across Washington. When it comes to sex offenders being released from the state facility on McNeil Island. Tonight, a rumor swirling that McNeil Island, a specialized center for sex offenders, is closing. It started with a conservative radio host in Seattle who reported that McNeil Island is shutting down and 130 sexually violent predators are being released all over the state. We're told that is just not true. McNeil Island is located in South Puget Sound, separated by a body of water from the rest of the state. KXLY's Jordan Smith joins us in studio tonight with what really happens when sex offenders are released from McNeil Island. Jordan what can you tell us? Aaron Kirsten, good evening. The release of sex offenders from McNeil Island is a very complicated situation that Four News Now has been reporting on for many years. And we can confirm, as you mentioned, that the claim the facility is being closed immediately and these sex offenders are being set free is just simply not true. Just five miles from Washington shore is McNeil Island, home to roughly 130 of Washington's most violent sex offenders. After someone has finished their criminal sentence and the court has deemed them a sexually violent predator, that's when they are, are um, put out on the, on the island, McNeil Island, on our total confinement facility. A rumor that the island is closing has picked up steam. It's a rumor Tyler Hemstreet with DSHS is putting to rest. Yeah, there's no plans to close the total confinement facility on McNeil Island. No plans at all? No plans at all. There are, however, growing frustrations over the reintegration process of violent sex offenders. Convicted offenders stay at McNeil Island for an indeterminate amount of time until they're deemed acceptable to return to a lower restrictive housing alternative, or LRA. So we have... Um, several types of um, less restrictive alternatives. We have two secure community transition facilities. Those are owned and operated by DSHS. The other option is community housing, in which multiple offenders will be placed in a large living facility together, closely monitored by the state. The most recent LRA being proposed in Tenino, Washington, a plan that is facing severe backlash from its residents. It's not a matter of if they reoffend, it's a matter of when they're going to reoffend. And with the security measures in place right now, they can do that with in two minutes just stepping on the foot of that property. But the placement of sex offenders is largely dictated by the courts. The DSHS has the legal obligation to provide housing options to those who qualify to reintegrate, but a judge is the one who determines their placement. Important to remember that LRAs have been going around for years. This placement is, uh, the placement of these sex offenders is dictated by what's known as the fair share principle. In other words, that prevents any one county from absorbing a disproportionate amount of sex offenders. This way they're evenly placed across multiple counties. And again, that decision is made by a judge, not the DSHS. Aaron, Kirsten. Jordan, thank you.